How's it going, guys? Um, some people asked for me to replay um, the league that I 5 0 with. Uh, just starters, I apologize for not being able to stream. I know life has just been kind of hard, and yesterday I wasn't feeling that great, so I just wanted to play a league kind of just off stream. Um, but uh, this list is kind of um, based off of uh, Aspiring Spikes Abzan list. Um, so I know I streamed uh, last was this kind of more of an Abzan aggro build with like Wardens and um, uh, I was playing around with like Rakshasa Death Dealers. Um, but I noticed that Aspiring Spike had a different show with Sylvan Carry Tids and um, a higher top end of Questing Beast, Siege Rhino, and Obsidat. <clears throat> um, I kind of like that shell. I tried his list, went 3 2, um, and I kind of made my own adaptations to it. I moved Tireless Tracker main, and from there I kind of played around with the mana because I feel like with Tireless Tracker and Corsair Crucifix, you kind of want Fabled Passage, but not too many. Um, so this is kind of this is the exact list that I played yesterday and 5 0 with um, that I'm going to be going through today. Um, but this has the two fatal passages that I mentioned earlier. It has a play set of every play set of every shock in our absent colors, so four shrine, four tomb, and four temple gardens. Um, I'll talk about what I want to do at the end of the video with this list, but for now, this is kind of uh, just what I followed with. So hopefully, it gets posted. Um, I really like aspiring list idea of the core of I, I believe is just the carry tids with the the big creatures. Uh, having Siege, Rhino, Questing Beast, and Abzan is just so much pressure because Rhino drains for 3, uh, Questing Beast has 4 damage haste, and Abzan constantly drains for 2. Um, the list that I've tried out, like Questing Beast has just been okay by itself in combination with Rhino. Um, and previously I only ran 3 Rhinos. But his version felt really good because uh, I feel like this sum of the parts is what makes kind of that, that creature suite. Because um, I feel like if you just have Obza on its own, I feel like it's not that great. And conversely with Questing Beast, you kind of want all three together and it, and it just feels fantastic. Because you're just constantly just pressuring them with uh, four powered haste with Obza that, with Rhino constantly draining. Um, it feels really good. Um, and the main change I made was having Tireless Tracker's main because I just, it's obviously my favorite card if you guys have watched my past streams. And it just kind of just flows better with Corsair and Fable Passage, and it's an early drop if need be. Um, and I feel like the format's gonna get a little bit slower, and that's where Tyler Shacker really shines, really shines. <clears throat> and then the sideboard, um, it was kind of a hodgepodge of things. Um, I have some great variety with Kaya. Combo's pretty good against all the combo decks like Nexus, uh, Twiddle Storm, uh, Is It Phoenix, and some Control. So combo seems really good right now. I still like having two cries. This is for mono black aggro over the remnants of it, but um, I still like a three mana sweeper against like all the other smaller aggro decks like goblins and just etc etc. Like I feel like this is a nice catch up for all the other aggro decks. Um, Blight beetles for mono green devotion and uh, hardened skills. Um, I think it depends on how the meta is shaped up. I kind of just added it in as just a one of. It could be a two. It could be a zero. We'll see. 3 Duress for all the combo decks and control. I really like 3 Duress right now. 3 Duress is fantastic. As well since we only have 4 discard spells in main. Going that up to 7 post sports is pretty good. Um, Ritual Suit is also another uh, sweeper. This could also be a Languish if need be. Um, but Ritual Suit has been... I feel like Ritual Suit is better than Languish just because like if you're against scales, they can kind of outgrow your minus 4 minus 4. Um... Other matchups that I could see Linguish being better is like something like Blue White Flash where they have like Archangel Avacyn. Um, because they also have uh, Selfless Spirit, so Linguish should be a lot better there. Um, other than so I think it's just a meta call. I just have Virtual Suit for now. Because um, uh, Linguish and Ritual hits all of our creatures just the same. So unless our Scooz goes out of uh, Linguish range, so I mean I can see it being Linguish, but I think it's just a meta call. Oh, Gogori Charms pretty, seems pretty good against um, um, all the uh, uh, all just the random enchantments that you see. Um, so stuff like Wilderness Reclamation, 
Um, the minus one, minus one is actually really relevant, so it's actually a decent sweeper as well in this format. Um, Blister Lion is going to be more of a utility, very versatile card. Uh, I really like it so far. Uh, I could see it being a lot of other things, but just in case the Mother Red pops back up, I like Blessed Alliance. Um, when there's a new meta that shakes up, you always kind of have to count for Mono Red, and Blessed Alliance does that. Uh, and the last couple slots is uh, Vraska and Gideon. They're just like my two Grandy cards. Uh, I expect Oko and Vraska counters Oko pretty well. Gideon's just a nice Grandy threat and mirror and control. And Carnage Tyrant. Uh, Carnage Tyrant is just a card that I've been debating about. It's between Carnage Tyrant and Six Minute Elspeth. I think it's all the control matchups and maybe the mirror. Because um, in the mirror, you can't really deal with the 7 6 Trampler. Um, and I think it just depends on how the control decks shape up. If there are a lot more like Supreme Verdicts um, and sell the wreckages, I kind of want Elspeth. But for now, I see a lot of like Detention Spheres and Cast Outs and stuff to where Elspeth isn't that great in my opinion yeah you still got a bunch of one ones but i feel like carnage tyrant finishes the game faster where i just want to end the game because react like aggro deck in, in, in the matchup versus elspeth where you're just trying to add value um but other than that um without further ado and i've been talking for six minutes <laughs> um but this, that was a lot in once because i haven't been able to update you guys on um on pioneer abzan uh, unless you've been paying attention to my twitter um so first round one is against red white knights uh i don't know a lot of these cards do when this guy dies but a plus one I'm kind of on a uh, target knight this card um when you cast a spell knight spell you uh create a one one um i am misplayed here i should have fatal pushed this earlier and i just kind of just let it happen but i don't think it really matters too much uh, my opponent has a lot of pressure here um, and this is where the painful mana base comes up, where we have a place that shocks. We have to shock in, uh, pretty much all of our duels here, except for our fast land, just to abrupt decay, um, and hold up fatal push. And then with a shock again to play a siege rhino, so really we only gain one life from a siege rhino. So this is where I see, um, swapping, uh, a Gala Shrine for a Fast Land and a Temple Garden for a Sun Pillar Groove. I think that's where it could really help because we could be at potentially 10 to 12 life right now, which we might have been able to actually stabilize. But here, I think my opponent just has too much, especially with the Mutable in play. Um, yeah, so I think this is where um, I misplayed and let them get a 1 1 human with um, unnecessarily, but I don't think it matters because my opponent has uh, 2, 4, 6. 8, 9 worth the power. Um, and that's to say if I don't even uh, survive until the next turn. Uh, the following turn anyway. So uh, post board, you can, guys can see, you guys can pause the video. This is where uh, you can kind of do the math of what I took out, what I took in. If I remember correctly, I just boarded all the sweepers and boarded all the thought seizes. And I boarded out one Tyler Strecker. Because I feel like Tyler Strecker is a little clunky. <clears throat> Um, so that's kind of a cool deck that my opponent has. It's kind of awkward though, because you have this like one mana two one, and you kind of want to have this come and play like the next turn. So it's kind of weird. But opponent also has Stolly's lieutenant. It's interesting. Blessed Alliance is pretty good here. It's a clean answer. Hold up my life. Uh, I had to shock in a Temple Garden to play Abrupt Decay. Um, I actually misread this card. I thought this was, uh, so when this comes into play, if you look at the top figures, you can look at the, it pretty much like an Ancient Strings for Knights, uh, or R's or Equipment, and I misread, and I thought this, for some reason I thought it triggered, so I replicate the Thali's Lieutenant. Um, so that was kind of a misplay on my part, but we'll see if it costs me, just play Siege right now. When in doubt, just play right now. So this is kind of a cool card. Hero History of Benali. I know this card has been pretty good. Was good in standard. Um, it's pretty good here. Making a bunch of tutus. Um, I attack with a rhino. Uh, it was kind of a bluff um, in the sense that my opponent could have traded off a 3 3 for a rhino. So it was kind of an aggressive attack. Um, but I felt like I, would, I, didn't, I wouldn't mind trading off my rhino for a 3 3 when this ends up going all the way and pumping up the team. 
Um, cast an obsidian out here. Drain more life. And this is where I gained a total of 8 life. And my opponent lost 8 life. Just from me just casting 3 spells. And this is the pressure that I was talking about earlier. Where you just go Rhino, Rhino, Obsidat. And... Um, this is where... Uh, I actually didn't exile my Obsidat. It was a line that I was thinking about taking. Uh, I didn't even end up blocking with it. Uh, I did, but I feel like it held off all your my opponent's other threats. Uh, here I also just left it. Um, because I feel like I needed a blocker even though I ended up not blocking with it. Uh, I feel like I needed to have the po supposed threat of being able to block the other uh, the other creatures. So yeah, I might have not been able to gain the two life and drain for two. And it might like it might have looked like I didn't do anything, but I felt like I needed to block hell off these other four creatures or whatever in the previous combat step. Um, I apologize if I'm going a little too fast, but uh, I don't want to make this video too long. Um, this hand is kind of awkward. I have Golgari mana, but not the white mana. But I can theoretically cast all the cards in my hand, except for Lily on the last hope. Put another bl uh, black source off the top, which I do. Grab the uh, top deck and Overgrown Tomb, which is probably one of the best top decks we have. Because then our castle can come into play untapped as well. Um, get another fast land. Opponent just has a Knight of the, uh, of the White Group, which is kind of a cool card. No values uh, yet. Uh, I abrupticate the Fervent Champion because it's slightly bigger. Um, and my opponent gets value off the Knight uh, since we have more lands than my opponent. Um, but this Corsair does a really good job of holding off uh, my opponent. Uh, I could have played Tracker and played an untapped land, but I feel like I wanted uh, Scoos in play just to have a bigger blocker that I don't have to trade off. <clears throat> and I just want to hold up to K as well, if need be, which I do. Um, this Corsair is just getting so much value. Uh, I don't know why my replay ended. Uh, I think this... I think... Oh, I think my opponent saw... Oh yeah, no, no, this, my replay is actually correct. My opponent just conceded because my opponent saw the Fatal Push on top. Um, and with Scooze being able to just outgrow everything on my opponent can... Can pretty much build, I think. Like, I was way ahead here. I have the Liliana set that's going to come down, so it's kind of an early concession because my opponent's not technically dead yet, but I definitely stabilized for sure. And I think my opponent saw my Rhino, so it's just, I, I don't think my opponent can attack through for sure. Um, so I think the writing was on the wall for my opponent. That was round one. Uh, how are we doing on time here? Uh, hopefully, this video isn't too long. Um, so this hand's kind of awkward. I felt I kept it because I had uh, interactive spells and an ob and an obsidat. So I feel like I, if I can just hold my opponent off and draw the appropriate lands, I could probably be able to win this game. Um, but my opponent going uh, Temple of Mystery and Growth Spiral makes me really sad because my Fatal Pushes pretty much don't do anything in this matchup. Um, pretty much just draw go. Um, I could have trophied the, um, uh, the, if I had mana up, I could have trophied the Thespian stage. Um, but now my opponent just has free reign to go off. And, um, how, if you guys are new to this deck, this deck is based around Lotus Field and, um, all these untap effects. So there's like hidden strings, uh, pour through the page, pour over the pages. So hidden string says untap up to, pretty much untap up to two permanents. Um, uh, pour over the pages, uh, you draw three cards, untap two lands, and then discard a card. So you're pretty much uh, netting one mana with this card and uh, netting two cards. So this is like a super, super ritual in this deck uh, if you have two Lotus Fields to play. Uh, which my opponent does. And then it utilizes Dig Through Time to find more uh, untapped triggers. Um, so you, eventually when you have enough mana to untap, you have um, the Fairy Fae Wishes where you search uh, your sideboard for any spell. And uh, you get Omniscience and... Um, 
Uh, oh my god. The one where you draw your whole deck. Um, you know what, you know what kind of, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the combo deck in Legacy where you have Omniscience and, um, oh my god. <laughs> uh, I don't know if my points, it looks like my replay is freezing. Um, I guess we'll see. But anyway, you, you draw your whole deck and then you have the Jace, the Laboratory Maniac Jace, and then you, um, activate Jace where you, uh, playback, finish, exiting. Interesting. So my replay died. Uh, pretty much what happened was my opponent drew his whole deck, uh, activated Jace with one card in, in, uh, let me just pull it up. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. This is, obviously I did not, uh, prepare. Um, oh my God, what's that one card called? Uh, enter the infinite. <laughs> so omniscience, you may cast cards from your spell without paying the mana cost. And then you do enter the infinite. Draw cards equal to no cards your library, then put a card on top from your hand on top of your library. Um, and then you grab those cards because they're from the sideboard. You have a crap ton of blue mana, and you activate Fae Rishes to uh, you choose a non-land creature card you own from outside the game. So you choose those two. You catch third Fae Rishes, get Jace. Um, I don't remember what Jace it is. Uh, for. Uh, Welder of Mysteries, and the key part of it is if you draw a card with your library has no cards in it, you win the game instead. And then you activate the plus one. Uh, target player puts the top two cards of the library in your So, like, you pretty much win the game if you have one card in, in your deck, uh, or two. Um, so with a combination of Enter the Infinite, you have Jace. So what happened was my opponent calmed it off, played a Jace, uh, with no mana, he was tapped out. And I Assassin's Trophy the Jace and won the game, <laughs> which is insane. Um, I can uh, post a screenshot of it later. I should probably have the screenshot. Um, I can actually let me just pull up the screenshot. I sent it to my friend because my friend's on uh, this Lotus Field deck. Oh, perfect. So my opponent, here you go. So my opponent, uh, cast and enter the infinite. Uh, cast it on their shits, cast and enter the infinite with all these fate wishes. And my opponent activated the the plus ability with one card in deck, and I assassin show for the opponent. <laughs> uh, I was, I kind of played with my opponent. I don't know how much it impacted my, my opponent's sloppiness. Um, but I knew what his deck did. And, um, I, in the chat, I don't know if you noticed, but, like, halfway through him calming off, I wrote cool deck as if it's my first time seeing it. Trying to bluff that I have no interaction when I did have the tra have the trophy and hope my opponent slipped up, and he did. And, it's, I think that's just influential from, like, me playing poker online where, you, you know, you, you, you do these tells where you can't, like, you might not be able to do it like the things that you want how do i say this um the tells you do in person obviously aren't as apparent online so you kind of want to do that so what i do on sometimes is like i'll like pause here and i'm like oh i'm reading a card um, in reality i'm just like kind of just bluffing it where i knew exactly what his deck was doing i'm just hoping his opponent my opponent misplaced plays a jace and assassin trophy and that's exactly what happened um here my opponent uh Pour over the page is just so good. And dig the time is so good in this deck. Uh, just being able to dig seven cards. Like, I think um, dig the time in Treasure Crudes is time in this format is, should be short. I mean, people say that dig the time isn't good without the fetches, but I don't know. It's pretty oppressive to me. <laughs> it's a lot. It, it does a lot. Um, my opponent... Uh, last card was a finale of revelation which is really good because again it uh, taps five lands and draws a crap ton of cards so the deck synergizes really 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 well um i forgot to talk about cyber because of the gideon aborting all the duresses aborting gogari charm for the omniscience um boarded out last toast and fatal pushes and decays because decays have no target 
So brought in stuff like Gideon and Carnage Tyrant because it's a fast clock. Um, more than anything. Um, it's a cool deck though. This is definitely the Storm version of, of, of this format. And it seems pretty good. Um, because it's really, really resilient in the sense that Lotus Field has Hexproof. So, like, in Modern, you have, like, the cost reducers, and uh, you, you can interact with the cost reducers. You can Fatal Push it. Um, and then you can interact with the Graveyard because they're a Graveyard-based deck with Passive Flames, so you can have, like, Graph Digger's Cage and, and Spell Bomb. This deck is very, like, spell-based, doesn't use the Yard at all. So, I mean, it does with Dig Through Time technically, but I don't think it technically counts. Um... I don't know what happened to my replay here. Um, this is game two. Uh, so my opponent combat off. <laughs> my opponent combat off and I don't... Uh, I'm just going to cause it. MTGO replays are awful. I, I apologize. What ended up happening was uh, my opponent had uh, counter spells. Um, I think it has Mystical Dispute, I think. So my opponent had all the cards, uh, entered the Omniscience, and then he was able to just uh, cast counter spells for free. Cast Enter the Infinite and Jason and encountered my uh, Assassin's Trophy. Um, so here my game plan is to go. Uh, aggro uh with a with a turn three tracker and this is one of the plays i was talking about right charlie tracker who synergizes really well with seven carrioted or you can play tracker on turn three and get value off it um so silver so like the like the tyler tracker and the seven carrioted is all kind of like flow well together and the corsair crucifix obviously flow well together as well um i played the castle um just so i can uh, increase the clock and draw more cards with Tyler Tracker here. Um, again, I apologize if this is going too fast, um, but I don't want this video to be too too long. Um, here, I'm just cracking clues just to uh, increase my clock with uh, Tyler Tracker. Um, I don't remember if my goat punk saw this Golgari charm. But I'm definitely holding up Golgari Charm here. Um, if my replay freezes, I'm going to be pretty mad. But there's five minutes. Um, I don't know if it's worth playing this out. But my opponent my opponent actually times out here. Um, but my opponent does uh, cast Omniscience. And if I remember correctly, my opponent casts Omniscience and then uh, Fey Wishes. And with the Fey Wishes on the stack, I Golgari Charm his Omniscience. And he ends up being able to untap more, I believe. Um, yeah, see here. My opponent, oh, sorry, my opponent cast finale, that's right. Uh, so my opponent actually has a shit ton of mana. Um, but yeah, so he... Yeah, so this is, this is pretty much uh, how the deck functions. This is kind of a good... Just floats a whole bunch of blue mana, pour the pages, blah blah blah. Um, this all this is also one of the best cards in the deck because Vizier cycles and then untaps, so it nets one mana and draws a card. It's one of the best cards in the deck. Um, absurd, actually, being able to like imagine if Storm like a, a, a ritual and Storm uh, nets a mana and draws a card. I guess that's I guess it's equivalent to Manamorphos. Like this is a Manamorphos is that that's that's a great comparison of it. Um I'm just gonna close it because I pretty much told what happened. My opponent cast an omniscience, I Golgari charmed the omniscience with the Fate Wishes on the stack, and my opponent lost. Um I don't want that match to just drag on longer than it needs to. Match number three uh against goblins so here i felt like i was thinking about fatal pushing uh i i, I took the one because i want to see if they might want to play a better two drop and i pushed the power driver and then i played scoos 
And I was thinking about um, Abrupt Decaying. It was either playing Scooze or playing or Abrupt Decaying the Frenzy Goblin. And uh, and here I could also Abrupt Decay the Frenzy Goblin um, because I'm not gonna be able to, to block. Um, my opponent can just has the nuts with Burning Tree Emissary and Reckless Bushwhacker. Um, so I don't think there's a way out of it. I was doing the math. I could have been able to Abrupt Decay, but my opponent again had the Frenzy Goblin, so just I, I, I couldn't block effectively. Uh, and then the next turn, my opponent can just Castle for the win. So it has all of it off, but it's not enough. So just a quick game there. Goblins just ran me over. Game two, Mulligan. Um, my hand's pretty bad. Uh, luckily, I drew the best card possible in Sylvan Carrying Utility, where it blocks and ramps me up to my rhinos. Uh, this is where it gets scary because my opponent has Burning Tree Emissary. Um, he could have had a Reckless Bushwhacker, and I would have been really, really screwed. Um, here I could have played Rhino or Golgari Charm, but I kind of wanted to egg my opponent on to play more threats into it, and my opponent does. Like, this is absurd. Um, I just 6 for 1 my opponent with Golgari Charm. Again, I also, like, hold this Golgari Charm, hoping my opponent plays another card, which he does. <laughs> and I, uh, I probably should have done it at the beginning of combat so I can... So I, I can actually block with this Rhino, but it doesn't really matter. Like, I'm going to block here. I'm going to block the Burning Tree, tree Emissary with a 7 Gary and his Gargari Charm is going to 7 for 1 my opponent, which is absurd. This card has been so good for me. You don't even realize. Gargari Charm is gas. Just Instant Speed Sweeper is just... <laughs> uh, here, again, I have uh, Philip Astor's Castle. So I can just play like a... Uh, I play castle first so I can play push. So like I'm, I'm kind of delayed on casting my spells here. And my opponent just casts all these 1-1s, one which is good, great for me. Um, I take a lot of damage here. I take uh, 6. I hold up, I, I play push. Um, here I just uh, Golgari Charm. Uh, just in case my opponent just snuff, snuffs it out and I, doesn't attack with this guy, I just I just wipe the board. And my opponent just has one card in hand and a go and a goblin instigator. So my opponent's hellbent. Um, here I cast Goose and I can start growing it more. And I hold up Assassin Trophy just in case. Point Stoke, which is pretty good. Um, here I actually cry. This is technically a one for one, but my opponent has no cards in hand, and he can just constantly activate this castle, and I'm not gonna, and I'm gonna constantly take what two or three a turn. So I'd rather just wipe the board and just have my other removal spells take over the game. Siege Rhino here is absurd and wins the game. <laughs> so uh, Gagari Charm is absurd, um, and Siege Rhino is a great card. So that's uh, three no. Now, great hand, thought season, the thought season to hold abrupt decay, and draw the fourth land for Siege Rhino. Um, I thought seized, and I took a chart of the course because my opponent had an Arclay Phoenix in hand. Um, it, my opponent's gonna take a while to get Treasure Coups online, and I could just take it with thought seized next turn. Um, I could have taken the op, but I'd rather just take the chart of course because that's what gets my opponent's uh, phoenix in the yard. Uh, I see a crackling drake and I don't have any removal for it so I just took it. Um, here I'll just play tracker. My opponent doesn't have any removal for it. If my opponent top decks a removal spell I guess that's okay. I'm not like too upset about it. Because um, then my opponent doesn't uh, pressure me with arc life phoenix. Uh, I draw fabled passage best land ever. <laughs> Domination with tireless tracker. Um, and then Questing Beast plus Tireless Tracker is just so much pressure. Like, this is the pressure I'm talking about where I just go turn 3 Tracker, turn 4 Questing Beast, turn 5 Siege Rhino. It's, that's a lot of damage. And here, my opponent opts to, um, try to block with Arclight Phoenix. And if he does, I don't mind just 
drawing cards and um, and just growing my tireless tracker. Um, my opponent spends two is charms and uh, a lightning axe is my tireless tracker. So my opponent actually has a pretty good turn here. Um, but I combat that with an odds of that and my opponent uh, has to leave a blocker back because otherwise this Ozzadat's pretty hasty and on top of that I just have Siege Rana so it's just game over uh, unless my opponent has a counter spell but my opponent doesn't know that opponent treasure cruises uh, which is kind of late and my opponent has to has, has to hold back both cards because if I remove spell for one then Ozzadat just wins the game so I played Corsair Oh, I guess I didn't need to. I could have just played Rhino for the win, not uh, expose that information. I think that might have been the right play. Um, just to not really the most information as possible, but it's fine. Um, sorry, I think I played game three. So I boarded in Cries for Is it Phoenix or for Arclight Phoenix. Um, I think I boarded in two, and I think two and been too many. I think th the correct number might just be one. Just board in one. Um, I also like Cry because it doesn't kill our own Sylvan Carriage, which is fantastic. Um, we put Is it Charms and discards an Arclight Phoenix, which is good because we can just kite it away. Game two life like this this the deck has like a lot of incidental life gain which is great because it's it kind of just um, doesn't make our mana base too painful because we can gain that life back. My opponent wild slashes Arkaya and then brings the Arc like Phoenix back and uh, takes it down which sucks for us but what are you gonna do? Uh, I draw a questing beast which is just gas because I can get rid of this Narset for future Trilus Tracker clues. Uh, and it's just a lot of pressure. Uh, but I'm putting top deck Chandra, which <coughs> which hurts. Um, I cast a Duress, take the Lightning Axe, and then um, play a Combo. Putting Treasure Cruises has a Treasure Cruise off Chandra, which is absurd. The, like the value is just. Insane that my, what my opponent just did. I'm gonna place thing in the ice. So here I kind of set up my cry. I tried to attack Sean and my opponent blocks. And then I cry and kill both Arcade Phoenix and my opponent's thing in the ice, which is pretty gas. So here I feel really good about my position. My opponent bounces uh, my combo with Petty Theft, which kind of sucks. So now my opponent has another thing in the ice, which is pretty clutch. And thing in the ice is really good against us, because, like, like mana dorks are really bad against thing, because um, for obvious reasons. Um, here I just swift end the Chandra, uh, just so my opponent doesn't get that much value off it. I, I could have swift ended the thing, but I really wanted this combo to stick, and my opponent was at 6. My opponent draws another Chandra, and that hurts. Because now my, my opponent's board position just stayed the same, and mine just got worse. And I draw this like useless cry, um, so I just I play this murderous writer, not the Tyler's tracker, hoping my opponent um, bounces uh, my murderous writer with the thing in the ice trigger. That's the only way I feel like I can win this game. So here now I, I guess I attack. Um, I attack because I wanted to cry. Um, if my opponent blocked with a crackling Drake. Um, but I think my opponent snuffed it out. So this stack gets weird. Opponent tries to is a charm my tracker and then lightning axe is something and then bounces my tracker back. But then here my opponent has just like this absurd turn where you like treasure cruises, lightning axes. Plays a Crackling Drake, brings an Arc like Phoenix back, activates Chandra or something like that. It's like something absurd. 
So here I crack a clue, and I need to find like a fatal push or something for this crackling drake, but I did not. Crackling drake is so good in that deck. Like if you just don't draw an answer to it, but fast, you just die. Um, his hand's fine if I can draw lands. I uh, have discard, discard, rhino, rhino. Uh, I took the Chandra. You can see arguments for like treasure cruise, but I took the treasure cruise anyway. So my opponent just has. Um, is a turn charter course and lightning axe. I can see an argument for taking lightning axe because it it um takes my rhino, but luckily I draw lands here, so that's that's pretty clutch. So this is the pressure that I'm talking about. Where now like we kinda don't do anything in the beginning. I mean we we interact the first two turns with discard spells, and then you just go rhino, rhino, obsidat, and it's like like my opponent doesn't do anything, which my opponent isn't doing that much right now. Um, like my opponent hasn't committed anything to board yet, so now I just slam a rhino, and then my opponent's at twelve, from me just casting two rhinos. Like I, didn't even, I haven't even attacked yet. And then I cast, I draw another, <laughs> so I just like murder, murders on this guy and just attack with a rhino, and then now I have lethal with a rhino in hand if my opponent doesn't kill my rhino. And then now it's like I'd gain all this life from my rhino, so like even if my opponent brings back a arc like phoenix, like okay, my opponent shocked me, my opponent dealt me five damage. I gained six life from over the course of two turns, it's fine. I, I I have a rhino in play now. It's like okay, sure. So now my opponent like has to hold back because my rhino can just win the game here. Like if I draw uh if I had a ruse ball, which I do. So now all of it has it just takes over the game because now like see this like this is exactly what I'm talking about. I'm just like rhino, 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 obs of that, exile obs of that, bring back obs. Like it's I dealt I did I even attack with that with these rhinos? I dealt three, six, nine, eleven damage just from obs of that and rhino. Like that's absurd, absurd. So th that I, like I, I'm really glad I'm replaying that game particularly because that just shows the pressure that is. Um, that that our creature base just applies to our opponent. So this is for the 5-0. I saw Botanical Sanctum and my heart sunk because my my hand doesn't really interact. Luckily, I drew a Scavenging Ooze. It's, it's an early drop here. Unfortunately, my opponent has a 3-man, a 2-3 out of all things. That's Stonewalls or Scavenging Ooze. Uh, we play a Corsair. And then now my opponent plays a Possibility Storm, which is absurd. So now I'm like, okay, well, maybe I'll uh, be able to uh, draw like a Questing Beast or something off the top. But, so I play uh, Sylvan Creative, but I have Murderous Rider, and I just kill the, the, the Mana Ramp. So my opponent tries to... Cast a Gilded Goose, but has another 2-3. So, like, I've seen the list, and my opponent has, like, Borborygmos, and that's kind of the main win con here. So, I, I cast Last Hope knowing that the only Planeswalker on my list is another Last Hope. So, that's why I casted it. So, then I can attack, and my opponent blocks with this 2-3, and then I can kill it. If my opponent doesn't block, I just plus and kill the Llanowar Elf. Opponent fights my tracker, which which sucks. And my opponent plays a Fey, wishes. So I cast Abs and turn, knowing I'm gonna. Uh, so I and then get Assassin's Trophy, which is pretty clutch. So I attack, and my opponent, interestingly enough, returns Fey, which is with this other Fey. And I wipe my opponent's board, and my opponent can't do anything. And weird game. I felt like I wasn't going to win that game. Um, so you can see how I said where I boarded in two dresses, boarded out the scoos and the trackers. Um, boarded in Carnage Tyrant because I wanted the clock. Um, the Leylands are pretty good here. I thought about um, Assassin's Trophy because my opponent's like ramping here, so I kind of wanted to definitely thought seize. And I took the Fey, which I think is good because now my opponent 
just has a love strike beast which is kind of whatever and love strike beast i found out after the game is actually a combo piece um because it um casts enter the infinite uh when you have a um possibility storm in play so now my opponent and i are just playing drago and this is kind of the awkward part of our deck where we just have sylvan karyatids and removal spells we aren't actually pressuring our opponent um, this last hope can get there if we ultimate, but it's not going to be very effective. So now we have a Carnage Tyrant, and that's the clock that I was exactly asking for here. I could also see that slot being like a Nissa, because Nissa applies a decent amount of pressure as well, being able to attack for 5. But I think Carnage Tyrant is a little bit more stickier. Um... Oh yeah, I, I couldn't tap my mana correctly to save my life to cast this tired card start. Um Final Cast West than a final time, which is should be banned. You know, it's sh technically once in a time is not legal, but ooh, okay. <laughs> Cat your car is tired, and this is where I talk about where the clock is just so fast. Uh, it could, I, I don't I can't ask for a faster clock here. And I have Lynn on the last top also to pressure. Um, and so. <clears throat> and point searches again. For some reason gets. He, my opponent originally got Return to Nature which is interesting. I never understood that. Um, I actually misplayed earlier. I think I could have trophied the Fey Wishes. And I think that could have gotten me out of this game. But my opponent cast, like I said earlier, cast the Heart's Desire of the Lovestruck Beast, cast Iron Infinite, draws a bunch of cards, and then, um, I, uh, I, I Abzan Charm hoping to hit a. Uh, Assassin's Trophy off my deck, but that wasn't the case. My opponent walking ballistas into a Borbo Rigmos and has a bunch of lands in play and, and in the hand and kills me. So that's kind of the combo. My opponent uh, enter the infinites, puts a card on top, which is probably Borbo Rigmos, and then uh, cast whatever, probably walking ballistas because it's free, uh, puts Borbo Rigmos in play and just and then just discards a chilling lands. Um, crazy game. Crazy, crazy, crazy game. I definitely think I punted. I should have Assassin's Trophy with the Fey with my opponent trying to bounce it. My opponent has Castle One Person's Power Time. Uh, reveals Love Strike Beast. So my opponent has the combo in hand. Um, luckily, though, we well we need one more land off the top to uh, cast Siege right now. I, instead of Thought Seize my opponent, uh, oh, I guess I can't Thought Seize because of Leyline. I just Abzan Charm, drew two cards, and uh, tried to hit more lands. Um, so now I'm just applying pressure here, which is like Rhino into Rhino. Opponent cast Oko, which is interesting. Attack the Oko down with Rhino. And cast another Rhino. And I, this is what's great, because I can pressure Oko and still drain my opponent with Siege Rhino. Like, I just dealt six damage without attacking my opponent. And now I'm just like, I don't really care about the Elko. I'm going to attack Siege, uh, my opponent. And I get lucky here. I, if you saw that, I fatal pushed my Rhino and hoping to hit a possibility storm because I think my opponent combos next turn and wins the game because my opponent casts Love, uh, Love Strike Beast and gets Omniscience. Um, so that was like my one outer where I really needed to hit an assassin trophy on my possibility storm and i do i fail to push my rhino turns into assassin trophy and kill the possibility storm and then i cast a rhino here and i think this is a screenshot i posted in my in the facebook group where my opponent turns my uh rhino into an elk <clears throat> so now my opponent just has a bunch of blockers and then i ritual suit to kill all my opponent's board and i just have a bunch of rhinos <laughs> so that's absurd <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's the 5-0. Uh, hopefully this video isn't too long, 45 minutes. Um, so let me go back to the list again. And um, 
the thing I would change, I'm probably just going to do this now. Um, I'm going to take out this Blight Beetle. I don't know how much Hardened Scales and uh, Mono Green Devotion is going to be. And even so, I have I still have a bunch of stuff for that matchup. I have Golgari Charm, two Cries, and a Ritual, and a Raska. Um, so I don't technically need this kind of card. Um, and, oh, I still have Kaya. Kaya's absolute gas in the matchup. But technically, I don't need Blight Beetle. Um, if Scales or Mono Green Devotion becomes Tier 1, I can see this card having it, uh, and having it. But I think for now, with all these Delve spells, I think I'm going to have an Ashiok. Um... In the sideboard over the Blight Beetle. And then main board, I'm going to add... Um, I'm going to remove two Shocks. I'm going to remove a Gala Shrine and a Temple Garden. And I'm going to have a Concealed Courtyard. And I'm going to have a Sun Petal Grove. So this is the changes I would make. And this is probably going to run my next league uh, for testing. Um... And if you do the math, uh, I worked really hard on this mana base. And if you do the math, I have 14 black sources for a turn one Thoughtseize, which is what... So I'm basing everything off of Frank Carson's, like, mana sources article. Uh, you want 14 black sources for turn one Thoughtseize. You want, like, 14 white sources for Obsidat. And I have 12, and then you count Karyated as half a white source. You need enough green sources for Questing Beast, which I do with Sylvan Karyated. Um, you need a double black sources for Lily on the last step on turn three and a murderous rider. Um, I worked really hard to in incorporate the Fable Passage with Tyler Striker and Corsair Crufix. So this kind of all ties together. We'll see how. So we'll see how much. I don't think the Concealed Quarry is gonna hurt that much um, because it doesn't check for anything as long as it's one of the first lands I play. So I, th I don't think it'd be that bad. I'm more concerned about the Sunpetal Grove instead of a Temple Garden because I don't want to like have a hand where it's like blooming marsh some petal grove or like some petal grove castle like you have all the mana but both lands play come into play tapped so it's like you're not gonna be able to do anything in like turn three because like if you have a hand of like castle some petal grove sylvan caryatid um abrupt decay siege rhino like you're not gonna mulgan in that hand right but you're not gonna be able to do anything like the first two turns so it could be kind of awkward there that being said, um, that's kind of like worst case scenario. So we'll see how that works. I just don't want that many shocks, I think. It's just too painful. Just like you saw the first round against Red White Knights where like I just, I was shocked. I was like taking two a turn just to play my spells uh, on curve. And I hopefully this alleviates that a little bit. But we'll see how the testing goes. And if you guys want to follow my Twitter, um, uh, KODimes22. Um, you guys can see what my testing results will be, or you guys can always just message me for the most up-to-date abs on the list. But yeah, more, for the most part, this list feels great. I have a, a 1K at my local... I, I play at Channel Fireballs local games... Channel Fireballs Game Center. Um, and they have a 1K this weekend, so I'm going to be playing something very similar to this. Probably lock it in soon. I feel like I'm like 95% close. Just need to fill out these last two mana slots and just, you know, the sideboard here. But other than that... Um, I hope you guys appreciate. Uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this gay uh, this replay. I'm, I apologize, it's going fast. Hopefully, when it's on YouTube, you guys can pause and kind of like slow down the video um, while you guys see the plays. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys have a good week. Uh, my dog is just like passing out. Um, I, don't if she, I don't know if she was visible this whole time, but um, she's just chilling. <laughs> but yeah hope you guys um have a good week uh i'll try to stream s somewhat soon it's, it's just pretty difficult um but other than that uh if you guys like we see please follow me on twitter and my twitch uh when i do stream you guys can see me live all right guys take it easy and uh catch you guys later